Hello everyone, welcome. Today I'm going to talk about information theoretical two round MPC without round collapsing, adaptive security, and more. Or I would prefer to call it simple two round MPC. This is a joint work with Rachel Lin and Ho Tech B. We all know MPC. Parties have private inputs. They talk and jointly compute a function. If some parties are corrupted by an adversary, they should learn nothing beyond the function output, and their joint view can be simulated. MPC has many different settings. In this work, we consider semi-honest adversary. We allow the adversary to adaptively choose next party to corrupt, and we consider information theoretical security for computing NC1 function. The function can be either Boolean or arithmetic. They are as powerful in some sense, but emulating arithmetic computation by Boolean gates can be expensive. Our construction natively supports arithmetic computation and only need black box field access. As for model, we present two constructions in different models. Our construction in the plain model tolerates less than half of corruptions. The other construction lies in a correlated randomness model. I will introduce it later. It tolerates any number of corruptions. The round complexity of semi-honest MPC has been studied by many preservers. By 2000, Ishai Kushilevi had already shown a three-round information theoretical MPC. In recent years, people managed to achieve the optimal round complexity, which is two rounds. The first is by Gargate or assuming I.O., then by Mukherjee Weeks or assuming Mufti Key FHE. Then comes 2018, which is a fruitful year, then Hamoud Alin and Gargate Srinivasan independently weakened the assumption to two round OT. And there are many follow up, follow up works here. In the honest majority setting, also in 2018, Nansite or constructed two round MPC assuming one way function. Then in the same year, Apple point or and Gargite or make it information theoretical. Our work developed the technique from IKO2 and ABT18. We construct information theoretical two round MPC in two settings. One tolerates less than half of corruptions in the play model, the other tolerates any number of corruptions in the OLE correlated randomness model. This is a model where any pairs of parties jointly hold the OLE correlation. They hold random field elements RA, RB respectively, and they jointly hold the additive share of RA times RB. This is the arithmetic analog of OT correlation. The key contribution of our work is simplicity. You are going to see how simple our protocol is Besides simplicity, we also achieve adaptive security with an explicit simulator. Here, star indicates a previous work claim adaptive security without proof. Our construction supports arithmetic computation with black box field access, and this also partially explains why our construction is very simple, and therefore it's also more efficient. For pPoly, there is a standard extension to pPoly with black box use of PRG. Our key technique is a direct construction without round collapsing. So a natural question here, what is round collapsing? Round collapsing is a technique used by previous two round MPC. Say the function is of degree 3, which we knew is complete. It can be computed by a constant round MPC, say BJW, but it takes more than two rounds, and we'd like to clap the rounds. The first step is to write down the whole MPC as a single Boolean circuit. Then, consider the gobbling of this Boolean circuit. APT18 made this brilliant observation. The gobble circuit is effectively a degree to function if the input and the randomness are locally pre-precised. I'll explain it in next slides. Okay. So if it is a degree 2 function, it can be computed by 2-round BJW. 
So that's the construction. The construction is gorgeous, but it's also quite complicated. In ABT, they also provide a simpler high-level abstraction. So let's forget the double circuit of the whole tower. Forget it. It's just an encoder. An encoder that takes parties' privacy inputs and local randomness and outputs an encoding. Then a decoder will map the decoding encoding to the function output. So multi-party randomized encoding, or MPRE for short, is the, is the combination of such encoder and decoder. MPRE is correct if this always matches the function output. It's private if the encoding can be simulated from the function output. As, as you might recognize so far, this is the definition of randomized encoding. For multi-party randomized encoding, the local randomness can also be simulated. Give the simulator private input for up to t parties. Here t is the security threshold. The simulator can simulate the local randomness of the corresponding party. In this work, we also consider adaptive security. Give the simulator a private input, it simulates the local random randomness of the corresponding party. Give simulator the function output, it simulates the encoding. And you can repeat and ask for up to t parties. Okay. We want to construct round optimal MPC, so we hope the encoder has low degree. Unfortunately, Isha and Kushilevi proved that the degree of the encoder has to be at least 3. But this is not the end of the story. Eppelbaum, Bakhtsky, and uh, Sabari come and say, look, you can divide the encoder into local parts and the global part. And we construct the MPRE that the global part of the encoder has degree 2. Once you have such degree to MPRE, you are almost done. Serum says, combining a degree to MPRE for NC1 with a two-round MPC computing degree to function gives you a two-round MPC computing NC1. And here's the proof. Parties individually sample MPRE local randomness. Then, individually compute the local parts of the MPRE encoding. The global part of the MPRE encoding is computed by a two-round MPC protocol. And this is the only interaction. Finally, parties locally decode the output. That's it. Now comes to our result. With this theorem in mind, we just fill in the blanks. In the honest majority setting, we construct two degree 2 MPRE that tolerates half and corruption. Combine it with a two round MPC computing degree 2, which we knew is BJW. In the honest minority setting, we construct degree 2 MPRE that tolerates any number of corruption using OIE correlation. And we construct two round MPC computing degree 2, tolerating any corruption in OIE correlated randomness model. And this is basically the arithmetic analog of GMW. So for the rest of the talk, I'm going to do the following. First, I will briefly review the IK randomized encoding. Then, I will present our MPRE in the play model and in the OIE correlated randomness model. IK randomized encoding works as the following. Any NC1 function can be evaluated as the determinant of a matrix in this canonical form. For example, XYZ plus S equals the determinant of this dimension 3 matrix. This is due to the connection between NC1 and the branching program. 
In IK randomized encoding, they multiply this matrix by random matrix on the left and the random matrix on the right. The resulting matrix is the encoding. It is correct, because the random matrix they multiply has determinant 1, so the determinant is preserved. It is private. It is also arithmetic. As you can see, it only uses black box field operation. And very importantly, this randomized encoding is a degree 3 function on input and randomness. As corollary, it's sufficient to just construct MPRE for degree 3 function. So here is a complete function. Three parties hold x, y, z respectively. The function outputs x times y times z plus some active term. As mentioned, I will first consider the honest majority setting. When I think of honest majority, the first thing comes into my mind is Shamir Sikshari. So let the party holding x sample a random polynomial p whose constant term is x. This is the Shamir Sikshari of x. Similarly, let the party holding y samples a random polynomial q, which is the Shamir section of q. By standard analysis, the product of x and y can be linearly recovered from the products of the shares. Therefore, the function output can be computed by the following formula. Shamir also told us that when only less than half of the parties may be crafted, it's safe to let the S party know PIQI. So let them learn. Imagine that magically the S party gets PIQI. Now each party can locally compute PI times QI. After the local computation, the target function becomes a degree 2 polynomial on local information. Seems that we are done. The problem is that parties won't magically get PIQI. Though this doesn't work out directly, we are making some progress here. Consider all the monomials in the formula. We can compute them separately. So this reduced to a new complete function sufficient to just construct MPRE for PI times QI times C plus some linear term. So let's take a closer look. Here, PI, QI, and Z are held by different parties. This seems the same as the initial complete function, but the ice party gets leakage PI, QI. What does the leakage mean? We formalize it as MPRE with leakage in our paper. Intuitively, it means we don't have to hide PIQI from the S party. We can give the adversary PIQI for free if the adversary crafts the S party. Let's see how the leakage can help us. Write down the new complete function as the determinant of this matrix then apply IK randomized encoding, expand all terms in the encoding matrix. Among them, observe that there's only one cubic term. So the first question, how should we handle this degree three term? Let me de delay the answer for a bit. Here's another question. RE use randomness. Remember, MPRE only have local randomness. So who should sample this random R1 amplifier file? The naive way is to jointly sample the randomness, but it, it won't work. We observe a smarter way to sample the randomness. Let the ice party sample R1, R5 by himself. So why is this secure? Observe that in the encoding, 
R1 and R5 are used to one-time pi P1Q1. Since P1Q1 can be leaked to the ice party, it's fine to let him sample R1 and R5. More formally, the only concern of letting the ice party sample R1 and R5 is that when he is corrupted by the adversary, the adversary will, will learn R1 and R5. But this is actually not a concern, because if the adversary corrupts the ice party, it will get PIQI for free as the leakage. The adversary also learns PI minus R1 and the QI minus R5 from the encoding. So it can compute R1, R5 by itself. So if you buy this, we are ready to answer the first question. Since we can let the S party sample R1, R5, he can locally compute R1 times R5. After this local computation, the only degree 3 term in the matrix becomes effectively degree 2. So we are done. Putting all this together, this is the randomness encoding for the complete function, where P, Q, U are polynomials sampled by the parties holding S and Y. The S party also samples corresponding R1, R5, then locally multiply them to reduce the degree of the global computation. The rest of the, of the randomness can be jointly sampled. That's it. The MPRE in one slide. Next, I will present our MPR using OLE correlated randomness. If you didn't get the last one, follow me from the next slides. I'll start from sketch and the next one is even simpler. We would like to construct MPRE for this complete function xyz plus some linear term. The function output equals the determinant of this matrix. Apply IQ randomness encoding by multiply a random matrix on both sides and expand the, the encoding matrix. Observe that there is only one degree three term and mean to somehow handle it. Before that, let's first consider how to sample the randomness R1 up to R5. And here's the answer. Let the party holding X sample R1. Because the randomized encoding includes x minus r1, then the party holding x will learn r1 anyway. Thus, it's safe to just let her sample r1. Similarly, let the party holding y sample r5. Now, back to the first question how to handle the grocery term? The answer is. Use, co use OLE correlated randomness. The OLE correlation provides random R1, random R5, and the active share of R1 times R5. Now, by replacing R1 times R5 by its additive share, the encoding matrix no more have any degree 3 term. So that's it. In short, the MPRE out outputs the following matrix. Randomness R1 and R5 are sampled from the OIE correlation between two parties, and the rest of, of the randomness can be jointly sampled. So let me finish talk by recapping our result. We construct information thread code to run the MPC in two settings. They can be extended to p-poly with blackbox use of PRG. As, as you just saw, our construction are arithmetic and only use blackbox field operations. I didn't show the adaptive security in the talk. In our paper, there is an explicit, efficient, modular, and also blackbox field arithmetic adaptive, adaptive simulator. Uh, 
As for technique, we present a new direct construction of degree 2 IPRE without drawn classic. And this formula explains most of it. So that's my talk. Thank you for listening.